Ashanti Regional Police come under intense scrutiny as it launches an aggressive push to flash the system of illegally manufactured and unregistered weapons. Our laws are not up to speed, both in terms of those who are permitted to import guns into this country and those who can manufacture and do manufacture extensively in this country. Mm. Okay, gun acquisition in Ghana is like buying tomatoes in the market. We hear from residents in an Ashanti regional community where two men were lynched today. The residents tell us they will take matters into their own hands if the police fail to protect them. This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. Top Story is brought to you by Bond Financial Services. Your success, our passion. Bella Mineral Water, the new generation mineral water. It's also brought to you by Live Boy. Still 100% better gem protection. Also by Blue Rose Limited, Shelter for All, and Star Assurance Limited. Disappointing and disgraceful. Strong words for the Shanti Regional Police Command as it battles with the crime situation that has left some residents in a state of insecurity. The Regional Police Command today blamed the gang-style killings in Kumasi on the local manufacturing and distribution of unregistered weapons. But that prognosis is attracting sharp criticism. Director of Academic Affairs and Research at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, Dr. Chris Yening, says admitting the problem of local unregistered gun manufacture is an indictment on the police because of what he perceives to be their persistent failure to deal with the problem. These are his exact words. Where do these guns come from? Number two, how many companies are legally registered in Ghana to import guns? Number three, what does the law say in terms of, of your ability to register and what are the procedures for oversight and approval. You see, because gun violence itself does not occur out, uh, out of a vacuum. Okay, those who have been shot are not non-entities. And let me extend my sympathy to those families who are involved. Okay, so in asking the proper questions and checking out the emotions, we may be able to get hopefully to to the class of this and then it deals with intelligence okay so what do we know about those who have died so that the police are actually blaming the situation on the manufacturing of guns in the city what is the level of enlightenment in terms of gun possession gun production and gun exchange in this country what are the demand and supply side of small arms availability in Ghana okay the argument that I am trying to make is that precisely because our laws are not up to speed, both in terms of those who are permitted to import guns into this country and those who can manufacture and do manufacture extensively in this country. Mm. Okay, gun acquisition in Ghana is like buying tomatoes in the market. At the Kofianan Peacekeeping Training Center, we've just initiated a major new baseline survey of gun manufacture in Ghana and gun acquisition. And it's disturbing. And the question is that it is not just about the police telling us that it is locally manufactured guns. Okay, the police are in all these villages where guns are manufactured. Question, why don't they arrest them? Mm. What are the interests that support local manufacture? What are the dynamics and the political economy of that manufacture? And why can't the police arrest these people? Mm. That is where the critical questions are. So any police officer who tells you and tells Joy FM, that, oh, it's because of local manufacture. Please tell that person, that, so why don't you arrest them? If you travel from Apam all the way to Komenda, there are manufacturing places <laughs> along the road. If you travel from Agunas Road to At Atimoda, there are manufacturers all over the place. If you go to the Sefri area, the famous Alabanyo and Nkunya area. So please, I, I think it's critical in attempting to mm. understand and hopefully resolve these challenges that we don't grab at straws. And I think that that explanation for, from the police, if not disappointing, is actually quite uh, disgraceful. The security situation in the Ashanti region today took a different twist following the two shooting incidents in the past week that claimed three lives. Residents in the Kumasi suburb today took matters into their own hands and lynched two suspected dam robbers. We have been speaking to some of the residents who are vowing to kill anyone they suspect 
of engaging in crime. Listen. I am just happy that they have been caught and killed. I thank God because in this part of town, crime has become rampant and we have vowed to kill anyone caught committing a crime here. The reason for our decision is simple. The police is not helping us. When you catch them and hand them over, they are released and they return to robbers. So for this part of Kumasi, when we catch a thousand people, we will kill a thousand because they accuse us of being the criminals. So for me, when I catch you, I will kill you for the police to jail me. Sister, you last five months or four months here, you kuni. Yes, it's a problem. They killed a woman here the other time. So for these armed robbers, if God allows us to catch them, then that will be it. Shortly, we will shortly hear from uh, criminologist Professor Ken Atifa on what we just heard and what it says about the security situation in the region. But first, the Ashanti uh, Development Union has just issued a statement warning that, quote, if the police fail in their duty to protect the citizenry, the citizens will be forced to protect themselves. Uh, this will obviously lead to anarchy and chaos, unquote. That's a statement coming from the Ashanti Development Union. Joining me right now is Edmond Opon Pepra, coordinator for the union. Thank you, sir. Uh, for your time here on Top Story. Is there a justified basis for such a grim warning? Thank you very much, Evans. Uh, I should say that uh, for the Asante Development Union, we are much concerned that uh, citizens living in the metropolis and the region should be free to move about their normal duties without fear. Now, we are much concerned that there's the, the similar fear craving in the society. People are afraid that they, are, they will not be able to move about their normal duties. And uh, who knows, it might be them the next time. There is also the general feeling that the police is not doing enough to protect life and a property. Therefore, they have expressed the concern that if this continues, then, then the citizenry will be forced to take matters into their own hands and defend themselves. Well, what would you say to the, what would you say to anyone who would say to you as leaders in that particular community and indeed those uh, opinion leaders people look up to you when you say these things it will galvanize people to indeed take matters into their own hands give the police a chance yes uh, I feel that every member of the society presently should exercise restraint but then a lot also depends on the police service uh, they, they will need to convince and assure their citizenry that they are doing everything to protect their rights. And uh, that means that swift action would have to be taken in this instance. We want to see the perpetrators apprehended and brought to book. But last week, this, this very weekend, this very weekend, Mr. Pon, we saw three of them were told by the police were arrested in Accra. Isn't that enough for you? Yes, I, I believe that not enough has been done presently. Though we, we've indeed heard that three people have been arrested, but we believe uh, it might not be the end of the matter. The issue goes deeper than that. Uh, let me take the opportunity to uh, express our sympathy and condolence with the bereaved family. But then arresting only three people, they have not even been prosecuted. Let, let me let me put we that let me put that one expert in this area. Professor Kenatefa, uh, he joins us live on the line. Thank you, Prof, for your time here on Top Story. Uh, listening to that and listening to those in the community who say, "Well, listen, when we catch anybody the next time, suspect or no suspect, we will kill you." How does that strike you from a criminological point of view? Hello, Professor Atefa. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you now. We just heard from the uh, Ashanti Development Union warning that, quote, if the police fail in their duty to protect the citizenry, the citizens will be forced to protect themselves, and this will obviously 
lead to anarchy and chaos. That's a quote from them. Earlier, we heard from residents from one of the communities today where uh, two gentlemen were lynched because they were suspected to be armed robbers. Uh, reading these things and hearing them from uh, the point of view of a criminologist, how does it strike you as far as the security situation in the town is concerned? Well, these are very worrying developments. Um, when citizens constitute themselves into vigilante groups, as appear to be the emerging trend in the Kumasi metropolis, we have something to worry about. We have seen in the past organized vigilante groups, some of which were by the military, some of which were uh, by police, who took their law, their law into their own hands. We saw this very much um, manifested during the proceedings of the National Reconciliation Commission, when evidence of that nature was uncovered. Um, we see that in Ghanaian society, resort to this type of instant justice um, feeds or develops out of a sense of mass or collective vulnerability. When people have a sense that the institutionalized mechanism for their individual and collective protection cannot guarantee their safety and security, then there is a tendency to resort to this kind of vigilantism, um, self-help. And self-help is almost always a sure path to anarchy. You have a suspension of, you know, the normal rules of, of engagement, um, the normal rules of engagement through the rule of law. And the people begin to defend themselves because they do not trust the agencies of state to do so. Uh, let, me, let me ask then, based on the reality on the ground in the Ashanti region, is there a case for anybody to make that we cannot trust the security agents on the ground in Kumasi because of these recent killings? No, I don't think so. Personally, I think that it is an overstated case. I mean, I, my heart goes out to the victims of these killings. Um, one of them in particular, the Antor gentleman, actually is a relation of my wife. And uh, my heart bleeds that a young man in his prime will be taken down in such a dastardly fashion. However, I think that um, these killings do not give a legitimate basis for a sense that um, the security agencies have failed in their duty to protect us. First of all, they have never actually fulfilled a duty to protect us. Their numbers and resources and the opportunities and facilities they have are, you know, in sheer proportion to the population and the demands placed on them significantly, but overwhelmingly inadequate. Mm. And it is not the police that have generally protected us. Citizens have protected themselves because of a belief in a normative order. But as a normative order gives way, as people be, begin to feel that they can do things and not really be taken, uh, taken down by the police, that the rule of law is not holding sway, then um, you see a rise in it. But I don't believe that as a, as a, as a city, citizens generally have a sense that the police or that they are justified in maintaining a sense okay. that the police not protect them. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Ken Atefa, the criminologist. Earlier, you had the, uh, the coordinator of the Ashanti Development Union. We'll hear more of this particular developing story in the Ashanti region. We'll be speaking, if you join us on Newsnet on radio, uh, to government about this particular development. Also, we'll be hearing uh, from the police themselves uh, in the region. We understand there's an aggressive push right now to flush a system of all unregistered illegally manufactured local weapons will be telling you what the progress is on the particular front if you join us on news Night on radio top stories brought to you by bond financial services your success our passion belaka mineral water the new generation mineral water it's also brought to you by live boy still 100 better gem protection blue rose limited shelter for all and style of assurance my name is evan spencer